thanks to video editing, we can skip to the end of this video and already take a peek at what I will create today. Maybe you have already seen it on the video's thumbnail and you are asking yourself the same questions as I am. What the heck is this? <laughs> Who made this? And most importantly, where is Louise? And who is the strange woman currently uploading videos on Louise's channel? <laughs> if you perhaps think that you accidentally clicked to another channel's video, stay calm, it's me, it's Louise Heinz. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but to be honest, I'm really confused because I have no idea what I'm doing here at the moment, why I'm doing that and what that is. I am so in a really, really positive way shocked by the things I am creating at the moment. I can't wait to show you more things for the journal I'm working on at the moment. I'm so excited and I have absolutely no idea what is happening here. It is so crazy and I'm so hoping that you can find some inspiration from these videos, which are obviously, or for me obviously, perhaps for you this is normal, I don't know. I, I hope that you can also see that there's something different going on here at the moment. But I'm really hoping that you can find inspiration from these videos, no matter how you feel these videos. It's absolutely crazy. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Let's make some clusters out of materials we can find everywhere. What the heck is a cluster? A cluster is something that you can build up from different layers and later on you can use that then as a little decorative piece in your journal. I think if you have already made some journals you know what a cluster is but if you are new to junk journaling then that is perhaps yeah, a thing which is hard to understand how to make it. At least it was hard to understand for me when I first heard about this word cluster because I thought yeah what what shall I layer what can I use for that and then when I realized and learned from other youtubers that you can basically use everything you have which is like flat then clusters beca became one of my most favorite embellishments why is this so hard oh my goodness I've already done this for my German video, but this little bitch here is obviously <laughs> something different. So you can, for a cluster, take whatever you have. I am going to take these flowers as like a main element. I have also experienced during the last few days that my new system of organizing my supplies during my process of making a journal makes me really happy. I have made myself a little cabinet from a plastic organization box. There's a total of 12 different categories on this little cabinet. I have multiple videos about this. I will link them all down below for you. And this helps me to organize the things I want to use in my journal during the process of making the journal. I just say that in case you are new here. And this is so helpful. So if you struggle with organizing the things on your desk while you are in the process, then please watch the other videos because I'm sure that that or something similar, perhaps you want to change this idea for your needs a little bit, um, then I think that it could be really, really helpful. Or perhaps it's only the starting point of your own idea, what you want to do to organize all of these things a little better. And especially when you have something like these tiny pieces, which you want to assemble to create, for example, a cluster or so, then... <sighs> To be honest, in the past, these things totally wrecked my nerves. I sometimes even ended up with 
not using them or not using them in the way I wanted to use them because they wrecked my nerves. I need somehow an order in my things um, to also not confuse my brain too much. If you have a brain like my brain is, then you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it can be really confusing and, and overwhelming to have too many tiny things on the desk. And this little cabinet helps me so much at the moment. It's incredible. And I don't want to sound arrogant because, you know, I have come up with this idea by myself. It's, it's my idea. I mean, I don't know if someone else has done it before in this way. I couldn't find anything on YouTube like that. But <clears throat> I don't want to sound arrogant when I say it's my idea and blah, blah, blah. My own idea helps me. <laughs> but... Perhaps that's something that you want to try out as well. And I say that in this way because I'm, of course, hoping that this is helpful for you. I mean, why am I uploading videos? I do that so that you have perhaps things which are helpful for you then. Otherwise, I could keep that for myself. <laughs> Don't publish it. So I have found these things here in my like normal organization system. So I have taken out everything which fits color wise and theme wise to the journal I want to make. And then I have put that into these little drawers. And later on when I have finished the journal, I can easily take these things and put them back into my normal organization system. That was really helpful. So I also the things I have chosen without you, so without the camera, that was really easy to do because I just um, could I could just take these little guys, these little drawers, go to my normal system, my normal cabinet where I have everything, and then I could go like shopping in my own stash and put all of these things in here. And I had something, yeah, this is like a little shopping basket, isn't it? And it's like tidy and nicely sorted the whole time and that made it really really also enjoyable to collect and no not collect but gather all of these things that was really cool so what are we going to do today we take some metal pieces i found these i mean you can take whatever you want as a base for your cluster i would recommend to use something where you really have the feeling that that is a base. In my case, I have chosen these and some other pieces I will show you in a second. These are really flat, a little bit flexible. That is, I think, good when we want to glue them to a page later. Some pieces of lace or yeah, solid lace, can you say it like that, could be a great um, base as well. So I have these and I like to place these things onto my table next to each other so that I have a good overview over everything. And once I have that, I can start layering really easily. This piece here I have left over from another project I made for this channel. Perhaps you remember we made these little belly bands, this for example. And this is just one of the cutouts from here. And I think this looks already really interesting because of these little threads here. And then I have these flowers, which I got from my junk journal friend Nicole at Nature Spirit Journals. She has sent these to me and also some of the other materials I use for this journal. So Nicole, if you're watching, thanks again very, very much. So what I'm doing here is I want to find some nice layering for these pieces. I have also some lace and obviously my color palette is black and red and some brown. So the brown I can reach with the metal here and the rest is you know, like you know, black and red. I also have this little cluster. I made some of these 
years ago and sprayed them with some oxide spray. This is Lumberjack Plaid Oxide Spray. I think that fits, ooh, that fits really well. And once you have gathered your things, I think making clusters is a really fun and easy thing. If you consider yourself a beginner in junk journaling, then try to find the most unusual things you think you have in your craft room. Take different things. I mean, it's helpful to have like the same bases or with these flowers. Uh, you have seen, I have taken them apart. W with these layers of the flowers, we get a really cool and cohesive look. Yeah, if you want, if you are looking for cohesiveness, it's definitely a good idea to take some of the same materials like these petals from the flowers or these metal pieces or even this base layer from the lace but then what you took on put on <laughs> what you put on top try to choose um, very different things like for example different buttons or charms or things like that because oh yeah three buttons now that is not a good example Louise. For example, let's say you have these buttons, then you have something like a cohesiveness because the buttons repeat throughout the journal later. But if you then think about alternatives, what to put, for example, into such a center of a flower and you choose something like this, then you have a center of the flower as well, but with a different item. Ah, this is probably a little bit too thick. These are from Nicole as well. And I'm so in love with the look of these, but they are pretty thick. Ah, I think I can't make that work to put them in the journal because that adds so much bulk. Ah, I mean, we could take these and just um, use them for the cover. But... I have another plan for the cover. That is my problem. And I think that I can't handle that on the cover. This is the wrong color also. These I have colored with some alcohol ink, but not all of them. And I definitely need alcohol ink on here. This looks totally weird. Because it's more orange than red. I <clears throat> will take some poppy field alcohol ink. That is the same color I've used for the other roses. To make them a little bit more yeah, detailed on the one hand. Give them a little bit more depth. And I do that mainly because the original color is not so matching the rest. I also added some pebble alcohol ink to the other elements which are made from the same material. I think this looks way better. Shall we try to... It's. Um, I really like that it is an unusual color. I mean, <laughs> it's silver. <coughs> I'm sorry, but my color palette um, I have used um, I mainly use this as an orientation and as yeah, somehow like a mini mood board or so and especially I use this for the colors I want to use in the journal so black red and brown and because of this color palette the silver is a little unusual isn't it but what could we do so that it is still a little bit unusual, but not silver. I mean, I don't want to lose the this one-of-a-kind character of this. Mm, perhaps we take some rust alcohol ink. Let's see. Ah. Uh, that is probably a little bit too orange. Yeah. Ooh, ah, holy moly. It is biting this. It's too orange. Okay. What about teak wood? 
Yeah, that's better. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What if we additionally add the tiniest bit of gilding wax? And perhaps I can bring out. Oh, yes. Oh, these <laughs> details a little bit more. Look. And how to get something like a center here because this is obviously a little bit differently shaped than the others so we would need something or at least in my imagination i want to have something round this is not round at all i know this is a special piece of a tree <laughs> you will hear about where this came from and why this is special in the future videos. I don't want to tell you too much about the journal yet and the the whole thing about uh, around the journal. It has a whole story and the paper I want to use that is going to be a digital paper combined with other papers from my stash but the digital paper is going to be a really special one, something I have made. This? Uh-huh, okay, I understand. I made something the other day off camera. Perhaps that could be helpful as well. I made these little leaves so I'm just thinking since we have this leaf here and this is a little bit weird somehow, can we perhaps layer this without having too much bulk? Is that possible? I really like this, but this doesn't fit anymore now. I also have this. This is cut out from a paint swatch with the with the die cut from the same die cut set. Oh, that is perfect. Does this need to go there so that the metal is in the middle of the paper materials? Yep. Definitely yes. And if we do it like this, I'm really happy, but here's some black missing. And then, uh, and with that, I want to introduce a new material. <laughs> Let's use some nylons for this. Uh, if you follow my channel and if you know me and if you, you know, know a little bit about my life, then you can now probably assume what is going on here and you know if you know me and if you know <laughs> something about my life <laughs> you know why I'm using this material I've already recorded my German video but you know that I make German videos and English videos <clears throat> and in the most cases I record the German video first because that is easier for me because German is my mother language and then it's easier for me to handle the thing with the language and um, you know creating and talking at the same time that is sometimes not so easy for me especially when I do things like this this is so uh, crazily unusual for me uh, that it's easier to for me to uh, record the German video first and so that why, why am I telling you that I already used this nylon material in the German video and there I did it for the first time and I'm so surprised how sturdy this is how extremely fluffy this feels that is just the craziest thing I have no idea why I haven't used this before 
this idea came to my mind because of yeah the context of of this journal <laughs> i want to keep the surprise oh. <laughs> but i think it's not possible anymore <laughs> to keep the surprise i mean because if you follow me then you know what what is this is and why i'm using this and what i also found out is that you can make your own thread from this material and that is so sturdy and so interesting so look i have taken the leg here and i've uh, in the beginning i've just cut the foot off and when i cut this i get a little thing like this and when i then do it like this look how sturdy this is it's just amazing if you ever done that cut it open then search for your needle where is my needle it's a little hard to get that through the needle but this is also probably not the right needle for doing something like this because the hole is so small but look even with the smallest hole it's possible and this is so sturdy i can't believe it <laughs> and so i want to take the chance to sew through here and this is now not only a great way to attach this and not only a great decora decoration for the butterfly, but at the same time, it helps that these pieces can't fall apart while the glue is drying. It's like a little clamp because it's holding together here now. But mm -hmm, I think I will additionally use a clamp. But now I can take it and it will not fall apart, but I will clamp it and leave it like that to dry when you then have the other pieces and your other arrangements then you can already start assembling them and i like i mean are they already assembled no i i don't think so because they are loose it, what is the right word i am not so sure about the vocabulary sorry but what i have decided here for example and also for the others which are laying around here pretty chaotic <laughs> that, that i want to use this metal this piece of the flower and this little bling bling thing and when i have that i can start assembling this thing and gluing it together and while i'm doing that and i found out that that is the greatest way to do that at least for me while i'm doing that and i have this single piece in front of my eyes now instead of having all of them or instead of, I mean, they still are here, instead of having the focus on all of them, that is what I want to say, I focus only on one piece. And then with these layers I've already decided for, I can decide if I want to add more. For example, this black piece of the nylons or some snippet pieces. I've gathered some things from my stash here. And now I'm thinking... Mm, this is too long we can save some of this material this number looks really good and of course you can now include the tiniest snippets into such a cluster for example some eyelash trim i like eyelash trim so much and i have absolutely no idea why i use it mm, not so often but obviously this is a project that changes a lot so now i have it sewn on here so that nothing can happen that it can't fall apart and then i can make a knot oh, that is so cool so then with the same method i will assemble the other things here and by saying with the same method, I mean, I will take the few elements I have chosen for the cluster. And while I'm gluing them together, I decide for additional things to include, if that makes sense. Paper, glue, and scissors again, but nothing ever goes as planned. Spilled coffee on my vintage lace. Oxide spray got to my face Cat knocked over my washi tower I've been crafting for 12 straight hours I wanna freak my freak around 
And imperfection by any means You get what you get And you don't throw a fit Is this just the ugly stage Or am I happy with it? I wanna freak my freak right now Junk journal madness Holy cow Tearing paper Making mess Creating chaos I confess I wanna freak my freak right now Junk journal madness Holy cow Inky fingers Filled with happenstance Dear diary, today I accidentally Glued my journal shut Mistook my coffee for paint Water sneezed while using glitter Now I'm a disco ball and realize I've been spelling defamorammer wrong for years Stamps and stencils everywhere Glitter in my underwear Accidentally used a bill as a page now I'm crafting in a race. Let's take a little bit of glue instead of an eyelet so that it doesn't get too thick. I made this when I found out that the materials I used from my stash of fabrics and lace are too much to put into my little drawers here. So I made these little swatches kind of swatches so that I know that I have more of this polka dot fabric more of this fluffy stuff and more of this I attached that to this bulb pin just to remind myself that I have that and now I'm thinking and when I did that I also realized that I without even noticing it made a little decoration for the journal already because this is of course a nice decoration we can use this here uh, I don't know how yet but I thought this could be good and this is uh, yeah well why am I telling you that because this is the material from swatching the the other materials does that make sense why why is it looking so strange is that uh, I think it's because this is a focal point and this is a focal point we have two things next to each other which don't match somehow but let's see if I put this here like in a row of three yeah, then it suddenly makes sense, doesn't it? Do we really need this bulb pin here? No, we don't, because I can see that I can glue that, just glue it down there. I mean, these don't have a bulb pin. So why shall I add bulb with this pin? Let's just do it without the pin. is good but perhaps we can oh yes let's try that <laughs> so let's make a little hole into the fabric here so perhaps we can take this I mean I've just <laughs> taken it off there but here it makes sense I think if we take for example, this oh, this shoe. 
I found this shoe in my stash. And now this cluster idea somehow has turned into something totally different. I mean, this is still a cluster, I would say. But from this round shape, I got somehow like a little um, umweg. I don't know the English word. From, from this idea with the round thing, we came to this shape, which is also... Uh, it's a little bit round. It has a round element, but would you consider this as round? I won't consider that as round. It's like a weird shape. Uh, and then in the end, we have something rectangled. And I really like that. I mean, these variations are really cool. But we also have this cohesiveness by using the same materials. If you now have these and you especially see them on this white mat or a black mat or a brown table or whatever, this could be like totally overwhelming color wise. And here, especially here, the contrast is really big and it looks a little bit weird when the pieces are laying here on the table. So I like to take something that I already have made that can be, for example, some cards. Even if I have something like a focal point here, I don't care. I just want to see how this would look in the context. And can you see how it suddenly changes from something weird on a white table, something loose, something without context, to something that suddenly has a context and is, mm, what is the word, uh, embedded in to or in, I don't know, the rest. Even if you take something really neutral, let's take for example, this, this is probably a little bit slim, but look how this suddenly gets a character and gets, it comes to life somehow. And you can easily imagine, or hopefully, how you could include that in a journal because with only this piece and this piece, you could make the coolest belly band ever. Just staple these, sew them together or just glue them down and you are finished. And you have your belly band and, or pocket and you could put something in here. Imagine then there was something in there, which is like, for example, like this in there. You have a totally different vibe from this and I really enjoy that. So what I'm trying to say is when I'm finished Ooh, what do you want to do here? Do you want to play with us? It was, <laughs> it was a little bit weird, but is that a sign? Do you want to play with us? Do you want to be somewhere here? No, I don't think so, because then we have the same problem like there with two focal points. Ooh, but what I could imagine is... Ooh, look. And that's also a thing. This was totally not planned. But if you find something like this piece, for example, and this is, it sounds so arrogant, but please try this method with this tiny cabinet or choose some other boxes or whatever you could put to your table if you struggled with the same things like I struggled with in the past. Because this card, this is a little collage I made, inspired, by the way, by Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. I made this a long time ago, I think it's, I can't even remember. And if I would have left this in my normal storage system, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing here. And that is decide already for a position of this on this thing and make something where I would probably never have come to the idea of, of doing that. Oh my goodness, it's hard because the glue can't dry there. I will do that in a second off camera, glue that together, but I will show you what I mean. The glue has, I have to clamp it, but if I clamp it, I can't show it to you. I would have never, 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 never in my life come to the idea to make something like this with this cluster. Never. It came only because I have this thing on my desk here already. And now I have the perfect little embellishment. This could be turned into a tag, into a, a pocket or whatever. Thinking about attaching a third flower. Oh, 
now I could even imagine to add a fourth one more. <laughs> Let's do that. Then it's like a row. I think that looks very harmonious. But without the materials on my desk here, I would have never come to this idea. And I would have probably also not use this card for this journal and then it would be in my stash for don't know how long and I already have it for so long and that is the crazy thing because I mean the, in a positive way crazy thing with this method of this tiny cabinet you use the things you have because you gather them and you choose them with your journal in mind or with a color palette in mind or with a theme in mind and with that, you find the most interesting things in your stash and then you end up using them. And I think that is the most important thing of this whole procedure. And I find this so fascinating, no matter where I put this. I mean, this, this card already has the focal point here with this heart. But even if I put this on here, this looks absolutely gorgeous. And now it has a character. Now it has life somehow compared to... To this ah oh, I'm so in love I have no idea what this is and how I will handle this let's put it to a more neutral card I mean I can <clears throat> when I say I don't know what this is and I don't know how to use it I say I don't know the context yet because this could be just like this a focal point on a card you could just Put it to a nice background i mean this is probably a little bit plain for my taste but let's let's say you had a card let's ignore the heart and let's just talk about that we have a background here i mean look finished perhaps a little quote here or something and i have the feeling no matter where I put it on, this tag I found in my stash, it had, by coincidence, the correct colors. Uh, I don't like this so much, but it would be a possibility. <laughs> I'm really asking myself, what is this? Who made this? And where is Louisa? But, yeah. Please let me know what you think about this. Do you, and that is something I'm really interested in. Do you think that this is still me or what is this? Am I at the moment like morphing into another creature or what is this? This is so weird for me, but perhaps you see it totally different. Perhaps you think, okay, everything is fine. She is still Louisa and we haven't expected anything else from her. Please let me know. Okie dokie. <laughs> so that's it for today. Oh, here's another one which is already dry. So I wish you a ton of fun with your own clusters. Take out the unusual things you have in your stash. Perhaps you also want to try out a color combination which is unusual for you. Like this color combination is unusual for me. And one of the coolest things about this is I have a pretty big mess around me here. But it's an organized mess. I have all of these little containers here. There's nearly nothing laying around except some things. But I can easily now tidy up my desk by just putting these things where they belong for now for and for this project. And that is just so cool. I can <clears throat> clean and tidy up my desk within a few seconds. And that is just amazing, especially when you have other things to do. For example, video editing. <laughs> stuff and that is just so wonderful so i hope that you could find some inspiration from this no matter what you do have fun and see you the next time bye bye